war level type crisis because we've got 7 billion people, more than half of them, totally urban and dependent on technology. And if we were to have even a partial knockout, I mean, this is, this is catastrophic. Well, yeah, it's not just losing electricity and losing the satellites and, and losing the power grid. It's the fact that hundreds of nuclear power plants could then go into a meltdown situation and unleash Fukushima scale events times hundreds, which would irradiate the soils, irradiate the oceans, irradiate the atmosphere, and it would make human life on our planet virtually unlivable for perhaps a year, perhaps a couple of years. Exactly. That's why I called it as bad as a nuclear war, not being clear. You're absolutely right. Now, and again, and the government admits this themselves and major corporations, and you source it all in your article. You're not yeah. speculating here. Why do you think there's this irrational chutzpah or, or, or bravada in the establishment? I mean, even after Fukushima has been for six months r raining radiation down, California as far east as Vermont, many levels higher in isotopes, in milk, uh, in lettuce. And their answer was, we'll just raise the isotope between 1,000 yeah. times and 100,000 times, depending on what isotope, and just wave a wand and say it's safe. So do they really believe if they just say reactors exploding and, and radiating us, if they just wave it and, 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 and say everything's fine? I mean, I'm all into technology. And I know they've even had a lot of cleaner, safer nuclear technologies, but there's no attempt to move to those. They're building more right. of the old designs. I mean, what's wrong with these people? With the GMO, with the nuclear weapons, with all of it, it's like they want to destroy us. Well, you're exactly right. There are nuclear power uh, designs that can passively cool the fissionable materials without using electric pumps, but those designs have not been incorporated widely. Uh, or, or at all, actually. So, so that has been abandoned. Instead, they favor the general electric designs that require more pumps and more maintenance and more upkeep. But overall, there is, there is an inherent arrogance in the scientific community, not only when it comes to nuclear power, but also medicine. Uh, there's an arrogance about vaccines, that vaccines have to work. And they must work because we say they do. Not it's because a cult. Of any I evidence. mean, doctors have one of the highest suicide rates. They have one of the lowest life expectancies. It's the same with top scientists. You meet these people, and they're usually neurotic yeah. and, uh, and literally think they're geniuses. And when you talk to them, they're only smart in a specialized area. They That's don't right. have general knowledge. Now, I meet other scientists and people that have general knowledge, and they're tuned in and awake. But it seems like the, the establishment goes for this centralized type arrogant know-it-all person yeah that's exactly what's out there and that's that's what's dominated the vaccine industry that is what has dominated even the energy industries you know science has a lot of promise but it has also given us sadly uh, a lot of circle the wagons circular logic the self-supporting scientists who abandon ideas that should really be able to help us such as for example free energy technology which I believe exists. We know cold fusion or, or exists. Or even regular off the grid. They won't come and inspect and give you the permit in most states. That's right. Uh, if you have your own off the grid, they'll harass you. But, oh, everything's government paid for if you tie into the grid. Well, well, well yeah. now you're still, still part of the grid. And I think that's one of the big drivers. There's a lot of reasons here, but I want your take on this, and we'll get into other issues. Because big corporations, and I'm all for free market, but these are monopoly men, invest in different technological ideas once they invest in it, there can't ever be any oversight. They can't ever admit dangers because now it's seen simply as a product. Well, that's right. And what's, what's really astonishing is that by running our world on these dangerous nuclear power designs, they're putting human civilization in grave danger. They're risking everything. They're risking the future of human life on our planet in order to protect their corporate profits in the nuclear power industry. We need to dismantle. I mean, I, look, I've never been an opponent of nuclear power just to be an opponent of it. But now understanding this risk of a solar flare and how it could cascade into the power systems, I think we must really look at changing nuclear power to a passive cooling design or dismantling the existing yes. power structures. Look, 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 this is a 1940s type system. It's extremely dangerous. Uh, it's a huge industry now in nuclear weapons uh, and the rest of it. That's why they go with the old reactor systems is so they get fissile material to build more weapons. That's right. And they're destroying our entire future. You know, Dr. Busby, who advises the EU and the British government, he said 
a lot of his colleagues think they're doing all of this to reduce fertility because they know fertility has plunged everywhere where you have uh, nuclear reactors and also uh, the development of the fuel. And so this is all part of a larger eugenics operation. Uh, it, it's clear now with the disaster in the last year, yesterday in France, the disaster in Canada that got no attention, the 50s disaster in Simi Valley that was bigger than Chernobyl that was covered up, Chernobyl, Fukushima, and government then trying to lie, getting caught, and no one even gets in trouble. At least the Japanese resigned. Here they yeah. would be promoted like 9-11. It's time to get rid of nuclear power. It's time to get it out I, of the ships. I totally agree. The boats. I, it's time to get it out of the subs. It's look. They've got two reactors in Austin, and they're so good at keeping it quiet. I tell people at you know cocktail parties, and they laugh at me, saying I would have heard. They're both up at the <laughs> JJ Pickle Center in North Austin. They're both dangerous research. And for folks that don't know about nuclear power, that means they're turning them on and off all the time. They're doing tests up there, and they've got research reactors all over the country they've got level four bioweapons labs with stuff that will kill all humans it comes in contact with that makes airborne Ebola look like child's play in hundreds of facilities in level two and level three containment again it's like the corporate whores that run things have a death wish and they want me to be scared of men with beards and turbans and i'm sick of it right well i'm glad you mentioned the biohazards because if you come down to it alex I think the three, the top three greatest threats to the continuation of life on our planet, human life in particular, are number one, the solar flares wiping out modern civilization at, through the scenario we just described. Number two is GMOs and the genetic engineering and the DNA contamination of our planet. And number three is the bioweapons, the possible release, accidental or intentional of infectious disease, you know, level four bioweapons that devastate human populations. So those three are the big three. Again, solar flares, GMOs, and bioweapons. And they, each one of those could destroy human civilization. In combination, we, we are really at risk, and we need to take action to stop these, these death worshipers from having such control over our planet. Well, Mike... Mike, looking at this information, now, now we've got to hurry because we've only got a few minutes left here on InfoWars Nightly News. We normally just interview a guest for 10 minutes, but your information is so important. We could talk to you for hours. Um, what do you make of the fact that Rick Perry's being excoriated for his, his attempted forced inoculation of schoolgirls with the admittedly deadly Gardasil and the fact that more and more it's coming out that Merck is buying off uh, legislatures to then try to force people to take stuff. I mean, this is the ultimate tyranny here, the ultimate civil rights issue. Yeah. Well, it also shows the ultimate victory that uh, we are achieving. Infowars, uh, Prison Planet, you, Alex, what an impact you're having, and Matt Drudge as well, because this issue is now, it has now become a, an attack point on Rick Perry, whereas several years ago, I think it was 2007 or 2008, when both InfoWars and Natural News first wrote about this issue, we were the lone voices in the wilderness uh, criticizing Rick Perry for Gardasil vaccines. And people criticized us. They said, oh, no, all these, all these teenage girls, they have to be protected. They have to be made safe. And these vaccines are the best thing in the world. Well, that tide has turned. And now it's an attack point. It is rightly discrediting Rick Perry because he made the wrong decision, because he put teenage girls at risk. I believe he is indirectly responsible through his decision, through his false mandate, his hoax, that that was a requirement. He is responsible for the maiming or perhaps even the deaths of some number of teenage girls oh, who no, should be alive deaths. today. There were deaths in Texas and other areas after it happened, and it helped them break the ice and try to get the force mandate in other areas. Moving quickly here... Another victory. Uh, TSA in major polls is over 90% unpopular. Uh, everyone's coming out against it. Here's human events. They've been accused of rampant thievery. Well, they get caught. More got caught today. Spending billions of dollars like drunken sailors, groping children and little old ladies, and making everyone take off their shoes. And then it goes on to say that the founder of the TSA, Representative John Micah, has now come out and said, abolish it. And, and even if they try to sell some corporate fascist model of it, they'll, they'll now fall as well. I mean, this is another victory from voices in the wilderness talking about this many years ago to now. I mean, it just shows on every issue when we have the truth and fight back, we win. 
Absolutely. This is a huge victory, but it's also an urgent warning because you know, you know very well what government agencies do when they feel they're about to be squeezed out of existence. They create false flag attacks. So you can bet the TSA, somebody within the TSA, maybe rogue agents, maybe somebody up at the top is trying to figure out how can they stay relevant in a time when people are sick and tired of them. And the answer to that is to stage an attack in an airport we saw them practicing this before, I believe, in, in Minnesota, uh, in fact, stage an attack to make the TSA look like it's actually doing something, even though it isn't. So well, they just got caught flag. in Arizona trying to get plastic explosives on a plane, real yeah. plastic explosives. Right. And, and, of course, the underwear bomber, where admittedly they uh, got him on the plane, he was all drugged out, came out, the State Department was ordered to do that. I mean, and, and this just hangs out there in plain view. Well, Mike Adams, it's great having you in Central Texas. You're going to be sitting in and doing the radio show this Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, naturalnews.com. And I know you'll be covering this and a lot more. Mike Adams, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Alex. Great to join you. Have a great show. You too, my friend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it with Mike Adams. And that concludes InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. 5 Pacific, 6 Mountain, if you believe in what we're doing, or if you believe in the First Amendment and the work we're putting in here to cover real issues, please become a PrisonPlanet.tv member. Please buy friends and family memberships. Please spread the word about InfoWarsNews.com and all the new things we're adding, the new features. Uh, I mean, the crew here, the work, the research, we passionately believe in human liberty. And again, I want to thank all the members of PrisonPlanet.tv. I want to ask you all to record these shows. Uh, we're going to launch a lot of new systems. Well, this will be delivered on tabletop uh, systems to subscribers. Uh, we've got a lot of TV networks and systems, but we're developing the show right now. And we couldn't have done this without you. Please also visit the online video bookstore at InfoWars.com because we couldn't have done any of this without your support. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars Nightly News from the front lines of the Info War. Lord willing, we'll see you back tomorrow night, 7 p.m.